So today we're going to be talking about a game that I recently received, which is Sakura of Rice and Ruin from Xseed. Yes, it's an Xseed game. Not a bad thing. And this little game here, well, I got the collector's edition and it comes with a few, a few things. First of all, the game itself actually comes with a manual. Um, this is the second game that I've received recently that actually comes with a manual. And I am, I am, I am concerned what's happening. Why <laughs> it's all colored and everything too. This is just awesome. Uh, really don't want to show that off because there's really not anything in there of interest, but it is, it is a manual. The game itself, the Divine Edition comes in this box that would be really cool, but it got damaged on the way to my house. So it is what it is. But the game itself is in this little box along with a few things. I've already played the game, which is why I think it's already open. And it comes with uh, three other things though. It comes with an art book, which is actually pretty thick and it's pretty heavy. The pages are all glossy. Great artwork in there. We'll show that off a little bit later. It comes with the soundtrack, which I was actually impressed about. The soundtrack actually has three discs and they have pretty images on each of the discs and underneath each of the discs is a pretty little picture as well. I don't know, this was so well done. I don't normally see games like this with three discs of music. Usually it's one. Um, it's kind of a whatever situation, but it just really surprised me. I do like the images on each of the discs. Very cute way of you know, showing which one is which. I'm not entirely sure what all the music is yet. I haven't listened to it. But uh, if it's the same music that's in the game, which I think it is, it's actually really cool. And then we have a Omomori charm with Sakuna on it. I was, I think this is what ultimately led us to purchasing, purchasing this particular version. Kind of strange to see an Omomori charm in anything, but we thought it was pretty cool that they chose to do that. It actually does have something inside it. I don't want to open it because it's a good luck charm. And so even if it's a printed good luck charm, you don't want to open a good luck charm. The art book itself, um, I've been kind of not wanting to look at because I don't want spoilers, but it has all the kind of basics in it. You've got each of the main characters. You've got artwork, of course. I mean, that's obvious. Now, normally I would show off all the pictures in the art book, but I am choosing not to this time because I am trying to avoid spoilers for myself. I know a few things like you get ducks and cows, but uh, I don't know like anything about all of the enemies. So I just wanted to kind of avoid those because uh, I don't want to know until I reach them. I think my favorite thing, particular thing, is that uh, Tama here always has his tongue sticking out, even in the game, like that is what they settled on, and it's adorable. So overall, the art book has 128 pages of images, which is pretty good for a game like this. So I was impressed. And now we're to the game. So this is Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. And I kind of just want to show off a little bit of the gameplay, kind of show off some of the graphics, talk a little bit about what you do in this game. Now, the quick rundown of this game is you play as Sakuna, a deity who 
uh, kind of gets thwarted, not thwarted, but screwed over by, not even really screwed over, just there was a, a series of accidents with the um, children of man, and now we are just atoning for our mistakes. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Now, Sakuna herself is what I would consider a whiny baby, and she is like my least favorite part of this game, but the whole game revolves around her starting out as a affluent jerk and uh, becoming a deity worth just worshiping. Um, she is the daughter of a warrior god and um, goddess of fertility. No, not fertility, but of rice, essentially, <laughs> of the land. And um, just coming into that. So let's load up the game. I do not care for any scene that she actually talks in. <laughs> Try to ignore her as much as possible. All right, so uh, here's the game. This is what it looks like. It is very cartoonish, I guess. And here's our little rice patty that we have to take care of. There are other fields and that's kind of mentioned throughout the game, but the others, there's five of them, they take care of that. We take care of this one and we control everything where the plants are planted, the fertilizer, how much water is in here. We can actually release it or add some depending on what we want. Um, other things that we can do and we have to do is we can collect things like snails and frogs in order to um, basically keep the weeds and bugs from taking over. As you can see, I, weed just popped up over here to make sure we get rid of those. Weeds will kill Obviously, they'll, they'll choke out the, the rice. We have animals. Here's our little dog friend. And uh, if we head down here, we have a little cat friend. Oh, does that feel good? The cats don't do anything in this game. They're basically just alluded to be mice hunters, um, which is fine. And the dogs allow my teammates or my compatriots, the children of man, to go out and... Uh, gather without being eaten by demons. We, of course, there's demons. I don't know what anybody expected. Now, this game reminds us, well, really, I just tried to figure out what this reminded me of, and my husband mentioned, this is kind of like um, Castlevania-ish. It's a side-scroller. Combat is... I don't know, I don't mind the combat. You have a light attack, you have a heavy attack. You use, at least currently, I'm using a sledgehammer and a sickle in order to fight. Uh, you've got this grappling hook thing, which is basically that, whatever, it's like following you around. I don't know what to call it. It's like a scarf. It's not a scarf, but it looks like a scarf. Uh, while you're out and about and killing things, um, you will collect food items, among other things. So, like these rabbits. Well, currently the rabbits are just giving us amber, which we need for fertilizer. But they also give us things like rabbit meat. I get shot in the face. Stop it. This is a pig, by the way. I did not know it was a pig. Okay, that's fine. That's not exactly what I wanted to do, but whatever. Now I'm way over leveled for this level. Or, yeah, way over leveled for this level. I was using a set of turns. You do have skills in order to make things a little bit easier. I think we're doing alright. <laughs> no, we're just not gonna... Why don't you let me up? Oh, there we go. The grappling mechanics gets a bit... I don't say complicated, just frustrating sometimes. Um, I have a hard time with it. I have a hard time with the side-scrollers anyway, but that's okay. You've kind of got a crash mechanic, I think is what they call it, where you can throw enemies into enemies and basically cause uh, damage. Hate the flying enemies. The birds are the worst. I can deal with um, the fish and stuff, but the... Yes, fish float. Don't, don't ask. Um, but the birds just are frustrating. I am taking a lot of damage, but it is just not... They're not hitting me. Birds have this, like, little dive bomb attack. You just did it. It's really annoying. Come here. Here we go. That guy just threw a... Oh! They will also blow themselves up. The group attacks that, like, the bombs and stuff are, in fact, like, group attacks. Which is kind of nice. Um, 
overall, this is basically the gameplay. There is, get off me, thank you. There, uh, there are bosses. Um, the bosses are very difficult. I haven't shown off the, the magic scarf. The ra raven, I think. Raven? I don't actually know how it's pronounced. I could probably tell you if I actually leave on the um, the volume when she's talking, but I'm gonna show you. Yeah, you can use. Um, oh no! Get away! You can use it to do multiple things. Basically, move yourself around. Uh, if we go in here, you can see the different types of skills, and you gain new skills by growing rice and unlocking scrolls. Uh, for the most part, rice, and it tells you how it all works. Um, really, the only other special thing is that any effects that you have are brought to you by food. Um, so you actually need to make sure that you eat. That's that's pretty much it. Um, any tutorials are made are gotten through key items these scrolls here so you kind of start out the game without having any knowledge of how to grow rice or how to really fight well and over time you gain those and are able to grow better crops and therefore get more powerful every time you grow another crop you you just get a little bit more powerful and uh i don't know that's I think it's a very cool mechanic. It is nothing like Stardew. One of the things that uh, pulled my attention when I was looking into this game is people were talking about it like it was a farming simulator. It is not a farming simulator. Like, yeah, you need to grow crops, uh, rice. You need to grow rice. And you do have to do everything for the rice, but it is completely different. Uh, a year in this game is 12 days. Uh, most of those days you do not spend farming, you spend them hunting and gathering, uh, killing off demons, like the whole point of the game is to go murder demons, find out the secret of the island, um, and the, the, just the, the race here is a way, is a leveling system, essentially. And over time you get better at growing rice, and you get better at killing monsters, and eventually little Sakuna here will become a deity worth actually paying attention to she is an adult like she tells you multiple times that she is an adult she's not a kid but she's childlike in manner she's very arrogant and um honestly kind of annoying there are other creatures i don't actually I don't know what the other creatures are there are other friendly deities and stuff that hang around we have some kappa somewhere <laughs> Um, there is also a lizard friend. I'm not entirely sure. I don't think he's a deity. I think he's just somebody that lives here. Does not look like he is out and about right now. Beautiful game. I think it's a lot of fun. I've been- it definitely starts to pull you in. That's one thing that I've noticed is as I play I lose track of time, which is always good for a game. The combat is fluid, which I do like. It is a little bit hard for me to grasp it because I'm just not good at platformers. And that has nothing to do with the game. That has everything to do with my skill level. I'm getting better at it. <laughs> so that's that's that. Um, I don't know if I really have anything else to say. Crafting is in this game for making new weapons and armor. Um, eventually I'll be able to unlock cows and ducks, I think, as well as other friends that live here new skills. I don't think I showed off the skills here. You get new skills depending on like what you need. <laughs> it's really nothing big. It's just, you know, as you pull weeds, you get better at pulling weeds. As you plant, you gain new ways to plant. As you... And you do have to go through the entire process. Not only do you grow the rice, but you also do things like thresh it and dry it and all that kind of good stuff like you have to do all of that if I recall, there are too many and uh she does tell you all sorts of things about it i have no I idea the best way of like water? growing rice in this game um i've been spoiler free and haven't done any googling so i, I just playing by the seat of my pants i guess a little bit here so i think this game is a lot of fun though I think it's more fun to play it than it is to watch it, to be completely honest, because there's a lot of grinding where you go out and you fight, and if you're bad at games like this, like me, it may take you a few tries, but there doesn't seem to be any downside to, like, dying. It just 
puts you back at the last save. So it is pretty seamless. Actually, you just unload and reload and you're right back there. It doesn't even ask you. It's just, eh, you died. Um, I kind of like that aspect because it's that makes it a little less stressful and it does auto save quite a bit. You can manually save if you want. Overall, I find the game to be really good. Um, the biggest problem with the game is right here and that it has to do with her character. It's a really good character. The fact that she's annoying is not a bad thing. It's exactly what you would expect from a deity who has been sitting on her butt for her entire life and been handed everything. So, I mean, that's it's exactly as you would expect. <laughs> she's annoying because she's supposed to be annoying. And I'm hoping by the end of the game, she will have grown into a proper deity. But I don't know, I haven't been there yet. I haven't beaten this game. I just wanted to show show it off and say, hey, if you're in, if you're shopping for a new game, I think it's out on Steam as well as Switch. Um, and I would I would highly would highly suggest. Gets it is a little bit slow at the beginning, just as a warning because you have to get through all the story stuff. Just a heads up. But once you get into the game, you should be fine. The years go by quickly. There is no like time goes by quickly, so there's no time to waste in, you know, doing things like growing your, growing your rice. All right, well, that's all for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I just, I, I hope you enjoyed this. Kind of a very quick look. I haven't been doing many of these recently because I just haven't been buying games. And uh, I don't know, this one definitely stood out to us, so we picked it up and I hope you guys, I hope you guys like it. I will see you all next time.